The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, Not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please feel free to have a seat. Grace, peace, and active balance to you from the one who calls us to be salt and light for the world, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Is that showing up better? No, that's kind of blown out. You are the salt of the earth, it says. And it usually has a little pretty pink color, so I apologize for that. So what is life? This is our current focus of invitation uh, as TLC. Last week, I introduced it uh, through the lens of LIFE as an acronym, L-I-F-E, standing for Living in Finite Experiences, which, if you squint, infinite becomes infinite. Living Infinite Experiences. Um, And hopefully impressed upon you that big L life is life and little L life is life. Life is life. The life we get from God, the life we live on earth, uh, may it all be to God. So through the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount, last week we heard the Beatitudes. We considered how blessed we as disciples, as followers are. Because remember, Jesus at that point was teaching and speaking to his disciples, and he said to them that they are blessed from the very beginning, blessed at the start, blessed and enough, even at that moment of being called. Blessed then to give a blessing when you're able and to receive a blessing when you need it. Um, Because again, God blessed us with comfort, with mercy, with righteousness, inheritance, in the very kingdom itself. So who are we to not share blessings? And from this stage of blessedness, today we hear Jesus continuing in teaching mode. And I believe he's still up on the mount, but he, uh, the impression is given that he shifts his focus from uh, the disciples to the entire crowd uh, that is gathered. And um, in, in doing this turning, he turns to a huge favorite of mine, Uh, which is when God, when Jesus references and points to items that are part of our everyday life and how God really does use them to draw our attention and to transform them and to transform us. Because I love that God reminds us of our connection and our salvation through those things, through water, that we have the opportunity every Sunday to stop by the font and uh, remember that we are baptized, that we are loved that we gather at the table and with bread, simple bread and wine, um, we're reminded that, uh, that we have a Savior that loves us beyond death. Um, so today what we get is salt and life, uh, light. So what is life through this lens of salt and light? And salt and light are some of those things, items I think that are relevant to talk about what they were and how they were understood to the original hearers before we think about what they mean to us. So what's an, it's important for us to know is that salt was a commodity in biblical times. Uh, according to my research and thanks to blogger Alice McKenzie, uh, it was used for seasoning, preservation, and purifying, in, and that's referenced in 2 Kings. It was used to ratify covenants. 
that somehow making a relationship, you brought salt to the table to say, yes, we are in covenant in relationship together. And it was used in liturgical functions. Uh, this, I thought, was interesting. To eat salt with someone signified a bond of friendship and loyalty. To, friendship and loyalty and salt. Um, a negative aspect of salt, salt was scattered on uh, a conquered city to reinforce its devastation. Salt was used to destroy. And even metaphorically, in metaphorical language, salt connoted, uh, denoted wisdom. Salt and wisdom. So salt had a variety of meanings to those that would have heard that word issued from Jesus that day. Light was also a commodity and um, more dangerous than today, uh, than today as well. Um, and I think light was a little more straightforward and obvious. You only got light with oil or with a source of other combustibles. And in that time, oil and other combustibles equaled wealth. So if you didn't have wealth, you had a harder time getting and sharing light. And as it took combustibles, you had it for less time of the day, and um, you could lose all you, you had if it was mishandled, because it was an open flame. So knowing these other biblically relevant considerations, I think, at least for me, adds to and deepens our reading and our hearing of Jesus' teaching. We hear Jesus say, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, and we're to hear these, I think, not as uh, stated commands, but rather as commendations, as, as affirmations. You are. You already are. You're not working on it. You already are the salt of the earth. You already are the light of the world. And what that means is that you are precious, that you are good when you are used according to your purpose and your creation, and that is quite varied, and that we are also capable of hurting and harming. Much like salt and light in what I just shared, this is all within us. Now, figuring out, this is stepping aside, figuring out and shopping is not one of my favorite things. I am not that woman that's like, ooh, let's go shopping, that's a dream weekend, that is not me. However, I've come across a favorite gift that I love to give to brides and grooms, especially those that I'm blessed to officiate for. Um, what I've done is I've taken to giving them a flashlight and a container of salt. And they probably open that up and think, great, yeah, we need these things. And I haven't yet uh, found a perfect visual representation of, of this Matthew 5, so I'm going to need to work maybe with Dick or maybe with, uh, with Tom on making that happen. But I do this because I think that salt and light can cue and call us to the good uh, news of today's message. The good news for the couple that I intend to give it to, the good news for us. And it is that, yes, you are salt, you are light. But can you have too much salt? Can you have too much light? Can you not have enough salt? Can you not have enough light? It's about balance. It's about balance and needing to work together. Because if any of us have been married long enough, it's great to be in love, but it takes work. Am I right? <laughs> it takes work. And sometimes one of us can bring the light that is needed. Some of us sometimes can bring too much salt. We can be too salty. Uh, and we need to work together and be forgiving of one another. We're going to hear about that next week. Um, but it's about balance. And I think that we need to remember that too. That as Jesus says, you are salt and you are light, go and shine. Remember that we have the power to love and we have the power to harm. And so to not take those things for granted, those items, that call, but to take it to heart and take it seriously. Um, and again, going back to blogger McKenzie, how she kind of wrapped up this balanced perspective is salt shouldn't call attention to itself in a well-seasoned dish. Instead, it enhances the combination. So we as couples, we as family, we as siblings, let's call one another to goodness and, and, and flavor each other nicely. And then she also says, light illumines other objects in the room beyond itself. It's not about shining the light on us. It's about shining the light on one another so that we can ultimately shine the light and point to God. Because we are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, 
But beyond that, it's because when we do that and we do that well, as we hear um, in verse 16, our light shines before others so that we can give glory to our Father in heaven. And I hope that every time that you hear that, your mind goes to baptism because that is what we say when we give over that candle, that we say, go forth and, um, and, and shine your light so that God can be given all the glory. So as blessed folks, we are called to be salt and light. As blessed folks, we are called to life, to have that living in finite experiences, living infinite experiences, to live our life as those who act in love. Because as I shared with the kids, if we've got the light but we don't turn it on, it's kind of pointless. If we have uh, items before us and we don't explore them to find out if they're helpful or harmful, uh, you don't want to put uh, too much salt in your cake and you don't want to put too much sugar in your stew, maybe you don't want to do either one of those. We need to act. Act in love, act in balance. So knowing that we are blessed but not acting in that blessedness wastes the precious. Knowing we are blessed but acting in excess and harm or harm weakens or hides the blessing. And this brings us to Jesus' final wisdom uh, of our uh, lesson that was shared today, and that's fulfillment. The ongoing and central message of Matthew is fulfillment. Jesus came to fulfill, and Luke's was all. That was Luke's message. So the focus of Matthew's gospel is that Jesus came to fulfill. You name a good thing, Jesus came to fulfill it. Today, in this reading, here it is the law to fulfill perfectly, completely, maturely the things that God has set in place to keep us safe. Not to be a mean old nasty God, but to keep us safe and keep us in relationship, in communion and relationship with God and communion and relationship with one another. Jesus came to ensure that and to remind us that we too can have life and fulfillment. So today we are to hear that we do have the necessary stuff to live and to love. You are the salt and you are the light. Use it in balance. Use it in blessedness. Use it in love. And next week we'll learn, uh, we'll hear how to have life in forgiveness. So beloved of TLC, we have the salt and the light. The good news today is we need to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In Jesus' name. Amen.